Looks like summer is right around the corner. It is June 1st, Wednesday. I'm your host, John Zadar, and you're watching On Top and Hot, where we like to focus in on OTC stocks and penny stocks. I like to find stocks that are catching attention. Now, normally we look at two or three stocks in each video. I'm gonna open that up a bit today. We're gonna look at some headlines, get a look at what stocks are moving on what news, and then we'll focus in on a few stocks and actually see what the charts look like for them. Ready? I am too, come on. I know, no big surprise that we're over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my go-to site whenever I do due diligence on an OTC stock. This is my first stop for one reason. The SEC and FINRA update this site every single day for every single OTC stock. Do you know how nice it is to be doing due diligence and all the information you find is current? Oh my God, it is heaven. Now, the reason I'm here right now, because I want to show you headlines first. I do want to show you how the OTC market finished today. How did it fare? Not real well. We did 5 billion shares today, folks. 5 billion. I know that sounds like a big number, but to put it in perspective, a year ago, we were doing roughly 40 billion shares in a day. Two weeks ago, we were doing twice that. 10 billion and it's not like we're bouncing up and bouncing down and bouncing up no we're just falling 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 and that is the absolute lowest i have ever seen it on the otc market so it is more than concerning to me <laughs> it's scary all right i got some headlines i want to show you we're just going to look at the news maybe you know these companies maybe you don't if they seem interesting to you do some dd there's lots of information out there so what we got here are some news presses that caught my attention and they all came out today. And maybe they'll catch your attention too. First one, Humbo announces launch of Search 3 engine. Today the company launched Search 3, a new cross-chain search engine designed to help users explore Web3, also known as the blockchain. The common complaints about Web3 are that it's just too bloody hard to find or the tools are too complex to use. Well, with Search 3, we've provided a simplified front door along with a humble web wallet that will simplify your journey. From what I remember reading, their wallet attaches to over a hundred other different wallets. Now what they've got here is a new concept, a novel search engine that works across all the various blockchains and searches out NFTs. And it can do it either by wallet or by contract address and it does it across the variety of platforms. So if you are an NFT buyer, you probably understand how difficult it is getting in and out and finding them. This could be the tool you're looking for. Sorry Google, looks like you missed the boat. That first mover advantage goes to Humble. The next piece of news we have today comes from TBPMS. This is shareholder results. They had a vote a little while ago. Now, if you're not familiar with TBPMF, this is a Canadian biopharma. They've got lots of different drugs in the pipeline in various countries around the world, and most of them are on the cusp of being approved one way or another. One of them is actually a pain relief. It is made with THC and CBD and a terp, believe it or not. And this has been proven to be stronger than morphine. It sets on in three minutes, your pain is gone, there are no side effects, you can't get addicted, and this can replace all the opiates we're using now. A cure for the opiate crisis. And I'm just touching on to what they can do. Well, they had a vote they told us about a month ago for a bunch of things, but one of the things we had to vote on was a reverse split. They wanted to know if we would approve a reverse split, 10 to one or up to a 30 to one. Well, it came back, no. Everything else was approved, but there is no share split. Now, this is a good thing for shareholders. Nobody likes a reverse split. You don't wanna lose your shares, but folks, I am a shareholder, and I understand the company has been very depressed here for a while. They were probably trying to resolve a problem. I don't know if they were trying to uplist. They didn't mention that, and I don't think they could have gotten the price up high enough, maybe to the QB, but definitely not to the NASDAQ. But my concern is, if we said no, we said no to their solution. So now they've got to find another solution for a problem we don't even know what it is. So what are they going to do to fix it? So that's what we're going to be looking for next. The next piece of news we got here iQuest. 
iQuest will announce his letter of intent that could lead to acquisition and entry into 700 billion 5G market. Today, the company announced they are entering into an exclusive non-binding letter of intent whereby for the purpose of the intended acquisition, the company will conduct due diligence on 2,300 miles of fiber optic network located in America. iQuesto has been in discussions with the target acquisition for the past two years, first announcing a potential partnership in May of 2021. Following a 90-day due diligence period, iQuest was expected to make an offer for the acquisition of 100% of the capital of the stock company that owns the fiber optic network. Now, they say this was first released back in May of 2021. So, I went and did a search. <clears throat> We're going to call it a typo. It was back in 2020, not 2021. This was the news that came out. You can see there, March 10th, 2020. They tell us that the company is pleased to announce that it, along with a very select group of large telecom service providers, has been invited to submit a request for information to acquire controlling interest in a 2,300 mile aerial fiber optic network company. That means the wires are up on poles. They're not underwater or in the ground. iQuesto moved from the inquiry stage to the qualification stage after receiving the recently announced $25 million funding commitment from a New York-based investment bank. The acquisition of a controlling interest in this fiber optic network company is potentially valued at over $100 million based upon the multi-phase plan submitted. The multi-phase plans also includes completion of interconnect between Central America, Mexico, and the USA within the year. The name of the acquisition target has been kept confidential at this stage due to confidentiality agreement executed as part of the acquisition process. One of the key aspects of this acquisition is the network is aerial, significantly reducing upgrade and expansion costs compared to our submarine cables. So we can see this company has been involved in the process of acquiring this company for a long time. This is over two years that they've been working on this. And now they tell us, following a 90-day due diligence period, iQuest was expected to make an offer for the acquisition. 100% of it. So, what is that? June, July, August, September. Be looking maybe for something to come out in September for iQuesto to acquire some 5G cable that is 2,300 miles long. All right, the last piece of news we're going to take a look at before we focus in on some companies that were jumping and bumping today. Uh, this is UA Multimedia to introduce shareholder loyalty NFT benefits. Now, I really don't do anything with NFTs, but I know a lot of people do. And whenever you can get something for free, well, you should be made aware of it. And you have an opportunity to get, not only get some free NFTs, but some free tokens as well. They tell us here that UA Multimedia Inc., a technology company with a focus in blockchain, cryptocurrency, DeFi, NFT, and metaverse, today announces the introduction of its shareholder loyalty NFTs that come with a raffle entry and scheduled Goji token airdrops. Now, the non-fungible tokens will be minted on the Binance Smart Chain and Ethereum blockchain. Goji is a UA Multimedia BNB chain utility token. The NFTs will be airdropped to all interested and verified shareholders of record as of June 30th. So that means by holding shares of this stock before June 30th, you're going to qualify for the free NFT. And based on how many shares you have, you're going to get a pro rata of their tokens, their Goji tokens. That's what it says here. UA shareholders will receive a to-be-announced pro rata amount of Goji initially along with the free NFT. The NFTs will be dropped on a to-be-announced date in early Q3. So, all you've got to do is buy some shares of this stock and you're going to be qualified for that free NFT and depending on how many shares you have, you're going to get tokens based on your share count, which are also free. I don't know the value of any of this, but when it's free, it can't hurt, can it?
<laughs> All right, I've got three other stocks that did have news today, but they were jumping and bumping and making moves on the chart. And I think you'd probably want to see more information than just a bullet. So let's go look at those now. Yep, we're right back here at the otcmarkets.com website. Why do you act so surprised? I told you, this is my first stop whenever I do due diligence on an OTC stock. And the stock we're looking at is on the OTC market. This is ticker VRUS, Verus International. They finished the day at 0019 with a huge banging gain of 137%. Pink, current, has a transfer agent verified, but they are missing their verified profile. Now that is important. We do want to see that sooner or later, but it's not going to stop the stock from being sold. Now this description, vague at best. Verus is a global emerging multi-line consumer package goods company developing branded product lines in the U.S. and worldwide. Now, I tried to get more information about exactly what it is they do, but there has been a big cone of silence around this company well over a year since they've had news we got news today i think the last piece of news before that was january of last year so i jumped into a disclosure to see what it is they're doing well they seem to be working in africa and the uh, united arab emirates they've got some products over there that they're working with and that's what's bringing in their revenues right now but the news today is going to change things. And there was a lot of relative volume around this company today. She normally does 20 million shares a day, which is pretty good. Today, she did 682 million shares. You're talking almost three quarters of a billion shares on a poor week day like today. Wow. Share structure. What do we got here? Oh, I hate when it does that. Right. I did look this up, folks, since we don't have the float listed here. Turns out it's just a couple hundred thousand less than the outstanding share count. So you virtually got 87 million in the float as well. Financials. Yeah, they're making some money. Was doing much better two years ago before COVID. That's obviously what kicked them down. Last year at the end, they net profit of $281,000. We know that because we got to bring those three zeros down here. But they did almost a half a million dollars in revenue. And do we have anything more current? Uh, zero and a loss. Ooh, well, something strange here. That says that they lost uh, $8 million. Yeah, and they had nothing come in last quarter. Very interesting. So the news today is important. Matter of fact, let's go take a look at that news. As I said, they have had no news here since January of last year. And they were working with CBD products back then, it looks like. Uh, Pachyderm, Top Apparel, uh, Nut Butters. I'm not quite sure what they were doing back then. But I do know what they're doing now. Uh, this is the news that came out today, June 1st. This tells us that Veris International, a food and hemp-based products company, is pleased to announce that it has entered into a joint venture with Floored, a maker of premium rare cannabinoids. Under the term of the joint venture, Veris will gain exclusive distribution and will be a 50% partner in the sale of Floored products in the United States. The current plan is to roll out various floored cannabinoid-based SKUs products over the next several months with a goal to reach $3 million in sales in the first year. This is a true joint venture in the sense that both companies will bring their core strengths to the business, with Floored providing the finished products and Veris managing distribution. Mostly important, we are coming to market with a high margin, high demand product at the right time to benefit from the improved market trends. CBD laws have relaxed here in the United States, so it is easier and you're going to see a lot of these businesses booming right now. Now, what was interesting about this news is I wanted information about Floored. So, of course, I went and did a search. Folks, I couldn't find any information. I couldn't find anything. Not one piece of information. So, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what products they have. I don't know what kind of business they do. I don't even know what country they're located in. They don't even tell us here. So, they do have a joint venture, 50% of everything they sell. All they got to do is distribute it. 
I don't know how well that's going to go either. But there was a lot of activity around this stock today. So let's go take a look at that chart, see if there's any room for growth or if we think this is just going to come barreling back down. So we're going to be doing our charting with Think or Swim. This is a free trading platform. You get it just for signing up with TD Ameritrade. And that's free too. Keep your account open and you can use this just like I am. So we're looking at VRUS. It is a six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble here of just under six cents and a low bubble, what, yesterday of triple zero eight. Wow, what a low. She has been under the 200 the entire time, had a periscope come up one time to no avail. And you can see right now, her volume is kicking up very strong. It's been actually growing. We got virtually nothing back here. It is slowly growing. And then today it launched. Technicals are strong. And looking at that uh, MACD is interesting. She has been under the signal line for quite a while. And she is just now approaching it. She is just now also getting on top of the 50, which should give her some strength. Let's come on down to that 20-day, one-hour view. All right, so our 200 has just come into the picture about two weeks ago, and here's a perfect example of getting power when you get on top of the 50. She was underneath everything here, including the 10, squeaked up on top to that 50, and once she got that power, she launched. She jumped for the 200 as soon as it was on the picture, and she's hanging around there right now. Technicals are still hot, but they do look like they're cooling off on the hour. Coming down to that five day, five minute. Not a whole lot of activity days before today, and that low bubble was yesterday. At the end of the day, triple zero eight, and she hit a high today of double zero two eight. So call that from eight to 28. So you're looking at over 300% gains at her high today, which hit at, uh, oh, about two o'clock in the afternoon, roughly. So she had a nice jump here, First thing in the morning, she got all the way up to, what is that, two, two. So that's over 200% gains right there. And that was done in, <laughs> that was done in five, seven minutes. She hit this, she held most of those gains and went sideways and then had a second launch and then gave a lot of that away and fell below her high of the morning. Did she keep more than 50%? A line at the bottom of the surge, a line at the top, and split it in the middle. That'll tell us. Oh, she's right there, folks. Now, I just eyeballed it. I could be a little high, a little low, but she came down to the 50, and whether she's right under it or on top of it, that's okay. She stopped at the 50% drop mark. She kept 50% of her gains. That is a good, strong gain. I'm happy with that. Does she look like she's going to continue? Well, the MACD obviously has been falling hard with the price. The RSI has come down, is turned up, and is looking a little better. And the CCI is in the danger zone, but it's coming out of it right now. I don't think this is going to run. First off, they said they were going to be making about $3 million. That's their projection in the next year. Well, it's only $3 million, right? And we don't know anything about this floored company. We don't know anything about them. And I think these question marks and little numbers may come into play. So I would not be surprised to see this fall. But maybe it'll bounce again since there was so much activity around it today when he comes out with another news press. So I'd keep my eye on VRUS for a news press because I get the feeling this is going to dribble down. I don't think she's going to hold these gains. Hopefully I am wrong. But with the market the way it is, I don't know if there's enough volume there to sustain it. All right, let's go take a look at the next stock I got. All right, the next stock we're taking a look at is a penny stock, but it is not on the OTC market. Any stock under $5, regardless of what market it's sold on, is a penny stock, and this one qualifies. This is TNXP Tonix Pharmaceuticals Holdings on the NASDAQ. She finished at $3.15 with just over 29% gains. She had some hot news today. As you can see by her name, she is a pharmaceutical company. And she does have a variety of drugs at various stages in the pipeline. However, today's news didn't really have anything to do with that. However, it was impressive and hot news. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Booming. They went from about 2 million shares 
to 161 million shares. Tell me that's not a lot of attention. What is the float on this company? All right, I had to look this one up. 18 million is where it sits for outstanding and float. That's where it sits right now. Financials, they don't have any money coming in because they don't have any drugs that they hit a home run with yet. Like I said, lots of things are in the pipeline. So they're more of a R&D, research and development, and they spend more than they make. And the disclosures, well, there is one disclosure I wanted to share with you here. This came out today. It came out today, and it just happened to be there. This isn't the reason I'm showing this stock to you, but it is important. They tell us here that the board of directors has approved a share repurchase program pursuant to which the company may repurchase up to 12 and a half million of the outstanding common stock. And they say they can do this at their own discretion whenever they want. So there's no time scale that we can put on this. But what we can say is at the current price, with 18 million in the float at $3, you're looking at about 4 million shares roughly that they would eliminate. So that would bring the 18 million down to 14 million. Floats getting better and better. So they did have news today. The only problem is the news isn't here, but that's okay. I know where to look. We got it over here at Yahoo. This news did come out today, and I'm not going to read it all because it's kind of technical, so I'll pretty much paraphrase it. Tonix Pharmaceuticals announces issuance. They received a U.S. patent for their smallpox, monkeypox vaccine. Actually, it's monkeypox, smallpox, horsepox, which I've never heard of, all combined together in this vaccine. And they got this on May 31st. Now, this is great. I mean, we have a vaccine, so if horsepox, monkeypox, uh, smallpox break out, this time we're ready for it. We don't have to go develop a vaccine like we did for COVID. Problem is, the only way this company makes money is if we use it. And if we use it, it means we are in another pandemic. So the only way that this company is going to make money without us having to go through all of that is for the government to stock up on it, to just put this stuff on back shelves for when and if, God help us, that day comes. So there was a lot of chart action on this today. Let's go take a look at it. Thar blows TNXP six month four hour chart. We got a high bubble back here of $22.72 and a low bubble about 10 days ago of $1.86. She has been under the 200 trying to get above it on many occasions. Last month she was over it for almost a whole month and then she fell down to that low bubble. Now, what is interesting and confusing to me, I didn't dive into this, but I see we had a huge fall here. This went from $4.17 down to that $1.86. What this bubble here tells me is that there was a split, one in 32. Now, I don't know, if it was a reverse split, the stock would go up in price and then people would sell off and it would fall. I don't see a spike. Is it a forward split? The price would fall. They would add more shares to the float and the outstanding, and the price would actually come down. So this may have actually been a forward split, though I didn't read anything about that. So after that low bubble, she bounced back up, got just under the 50-day, fell again, and once she got over that 50-day, folks, she got that power Boom, she launched herself, and I mean, she really kicked off that 10 all the way up to that 200, tagged it, and pulled back. Let's look at that 20-day, one-hour view. So she is, again, riding underneath that 200-day SMA, had that big fall, tried to bounce back, couldn't do it, sitting on the 200-day haul, which is like the 200-day SMA, but it takes current prices into account more. And then she launched. Like I said, once she got on top of that 50, here we go, on top of the 50, boink, on top of the 200, more power. Vroom! But it looks like she gave virtually all of it back. Let's look at that five-day, five-minute. So, the 200 came down, met the price, and it looks like the 200 actually cut through the price as the price was cutting through it. Got itself a bit of a lift, and it's bouncing off of that 200 as it goes up. And today it broke it. 
Today it fell down underneath it after a very good climb. It went from $2.68 up to $4.79. And if you actually look from the close yesterday, that is 100% gains. And then it fell all the way back down to here. Let me zoom in on that. So she hit her high here of 4.79. What time was that? That was, uh, oh, 10.45. 10:45 in the morning and then it just fell away crashed through the 50 crashed through the 200 looked hopeless folks you can see the macd is falling hard all this time right here after market she had a crossover right here she's starting to turn back up and she's getting back to that signal line get above that signal line she'll get some more strength get above that 50 get above that 200 more strength those are uh, pellet pills <laughs> give you some power the rsi is definitely strong we are right under 60 and the cci is above the top line looking good so honestly this looks like it's about ready to recover like all of this is going to cut through all of the S smas and continue on her run again that's the way it looks all right let's go take a look at that third stock i got for us so that last stock is G Tour, ticker G T O R. Finished the day just over four cents and almost four percent gains. She's on the pink tier. She's current and she's got those precious green ticks over there, so she looks really good. Now they tell us that G Tour Inc. is a developmental stage company engaged in the business of esports. The company, through its wholly owned subsidiary Shadow Gaming Inc., has aggressively entered the esports market. GTour.com has been launched and is one of the most comprehensive gaming portals in the world. The company is now accepting subscriptions from players, gamers, and tournament organizers. So that's what they've been doing. But that's got nothing to do with the news today. No, they've taken a whole new course. They're adding a whole new revenue stream to their company, and it is huge. So what sort of relative volume was around the news today? Well, not as much as the others, but she went from 1.1 million shares up to 10 million shares today. So you're looking at about eight times her normal volume. What is their share structure? Well, at least we got all the information here. We have about 200 million outstanding and roughly half of that is in the float. So we got a float roughly of 100 million. What are their financials over here? Well, they do have some. This is, uh, geez, this is a year ago. And they had $13,000. Don't forget those three zeros. Thank God. $13,000. But look here. Cost of revenue. They didn't have to pay anything for the money they made. They got to keep all $13,000. Good for them. And what about recent quarterlies? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got three more since then. So they've gone from 18000 to 22000 to 27000 Not huge numbers, but they are on the increase. Their revenues are getting bigger and bigger. But with the news today, there's going to be a much bigger increase. Uh, what about disclosures? Is there anything we can see over here? Financials are all on time. And uh, about a week ago, they did have something, but it doesn't look too important. I'm going to let that sit. But I am going to jump into the news because that is important. Now, their news presses aren't like everybody else's. They don't have a headline for this or that. They don't break it all down like that. All they do is once a week, they give you an update on what's going on with the company. I got to tell you what, I like that. Now, it is difficult to do DD. I got to jump into every single one of these and read them, and I haven't done that. All I did was look at the last one, or I should say the most recent one that came out on the last day of last month yesterday so let's take a look at this so though this report is for the end of may 28th this actually came out may 31st so it did come out yesterday g tour inc an emerging leader in the esports markets announces the company has successfully signed a deal valued at over 100 million dollars on june 14th 2022 the company will launch g tour city in the metaverse g tour city will be comprised of 2145 commercial parcels of land in the metaverse that will produce a total of just over 4,000 commercial and residential parcels. G Tour City will be an entire metaverse city made up of businesses and corporations across a variety of sectors. The company expects the majority of buyers will be in the entertainment, retail, or gaming business. 
Parcels can be purchased starting June 14th of this year using the world's top cryptocurrencies and prices start. Are you ready for this? The smallest parcel is $8,400 for digital property. The most expensive parcel is $28 million. What? For digital property? Oh my God. The deal is being paid for by utilizing the company's blank check preferred stock. By using blank check preferred stock to fund this massive purchase, the company will not dilute shareholders. Due to the complexity of the interfaces between G2 and the metaverse, the company will not be releasing the name of the metaverse or the additional details until 9 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Tuesday, June 14th. So, there's probably going to be a catalyst on June 14th, folks. I would be watching this. I don't know all that's going on, but that's a lot of money. They've got over 4,000 parcels that they're going to sell between $8,000 and $28 million each. Wow, that is a whole new revenue base, and it is hot, right? It's hot, and they're targeting businesses in the entertainment sectors where money is readily available these aren't just consumers like me and you so what does the chart look like let's go see so now we're looking at GTOR six month four hour chart and I don't have a clue what all of this activity is here because I did not jump into those weekly updates but she did hit a high here of 17 cents almost jumping from about three and a half cents gave it all away fell down to the slow just over a penny and here recently is getting some power she got on top of the 50 here which had her banging her head against that 200 let me out let me out came down and bounced up got on top of that 200 on the four hour chart and then launched herself she has some strong technicals that are showing signs of cooling down right now the 20 day one hour view all right so here she is riding along most of the smas she hit a low bubble here, which gave her enough encouragement to get on to that 50 again. Once her head and shoulders were on top of that, she got some power. And once the news came out, she launched right off of the 200. We come in on that five day, five minute. Not a whole heck of a lot going on until that news press came out uh, yesterday and she launched. She went from about two cents to four and a half cents here. So you got well over 100% gains there. This hit at about uh, 2.30 in the afternoon when she started to fall away. But I can see, oh yeah, she kept far more than 50% of her gains, right about there. Yeah, look at that, she's way up there. She came down over the 50 and you can see she's fighting the 50. Came here, quick hook, and she's landed right on the 50, which is where I think she wants to sit. When we look at the technicals, they look pretty promising. We have the MACD doing a crossover right now, coming up to the signal line. That's going to give her some power. She's sitting on the 50. That should give her a good boost of power too, and she's already over the 200. RSI is hitting 60. That's where you want the change to begin at 60. And our CCSI is approaching the green, though it is pulled back just a little bit. I like the chart. The chart does look good to me, but I like the news. Look, folks, digital property is easy. What is it going to cost for them to make it? Pfft. It's going to cost them man hours. It's going to cost a paycheck to pay somebody to make it, but that is it. This is profit, profit, profit. And boy, oh boy, between $8,000 and $28 million per parcel, and they got 4,000 parcels. Remember, this is launching June 14th. I think that's a Tuesday, and they said they're not going to tell any more information until 9 a.m. So that's going to give you one half hour before the bell rings. Put that on your calendar, June 14th, 9 a.m. I believe it's a Tuesday. G-T-O-R. This may get another great run, and you're going to want to grab it if it's there. So there you have six, maybe seven stocks we looked at. All had news today, soft catalyst, hard catalyst, big or small. They were all in the news, all catching attention, doing some jumping and bumping. So hopefully you've seen something there today that you're interested in. Remember, folks, there's lots of that out there. DD comes in all forms, news, technicals and charts, how many trades, volume, 
Just jump in and see what you find. It's like fishing. You never know what's going to bite your hook until you put your hook in the water. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya. Thank you.